articles have been republished in several North American chapter newsletters, and his story has been featured in Austin Canada magazine. And we also have Brandy. Brandy. <laughs> Brandy was originally diagnosed with ulcerative colitis when she was just 15 years old. She was able to keep her symptoms largely at bay until her second pregnancy and an ostomy surgery in 2009, at which time Anthony, ostomy parents, I had the pleasure of meeting and helping her. She later had reversal surgery and has been a J pouch pouch since late 2010. Brandy created Joey's ostomy undergarments originally for herself, and started sharing her garments and introduced them for sale in 2012. You can take a look at them here at her booth. She has been helping to rekindle life, life spark and laugh for many people with the last two since. Warm welcome for both Eric and Brandy. to be in British Columbia. This is the first time that I've ever been here, and it's an incredibly beautiful province. I know why you guys keep it secret from the rest of the world. Uh, keep it that way. <laughs> so, today's talk we're going to be uh, discussing secrets to dressing with an ostomy. So, as you heard, uh, my name is Eric. Uh, I was actually diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2008. Unfortunately, my Crohn's disease uh, did lead to an ileostomy. Now, I say unfortunately because most people would say unfortunately. I personally find that my ostomy has given me more than I could ever have imagined. And I've been a permanent ileostomy now uh, since 2013. I've been living as a vegan since uh, 2000, so it's been quite a long time. And for those who don't know, uh, as a vegan, I don't eat any kind of animal products. I don't wear things like leather or silk. And uh, I found it to be a bit of a, a challenge. I think before getting my ostomy, I thought, well, how am I supposed to eat salad if I have an ileostomy? And that's when I found the vegan ostomy website. So I actually started the site uh, a couple of months before my surgery, or I should say weeks before my surgery. And I was kind of looking for other uh, vegans that have an ostomy, I was looking for ways that you know I could be able to eat salad and beans and things like that again. And I was getting really frustrated, so I decided to start uh, the website, which now gets over 30,000 unique visitors from all over the world. I do have uh, quite a few articles there that share my experience, and I also put together videos that I put up on YouTube, so for those who don't like to read, you can always watch the video. Hi, so happy World Ostomy Day and uh, Older Persons Day too. Um, but yes, as you heard, uh, I do have a J pouch. I'm almost at six years now. Um, I uh, was uh, ostomy for not a long time, but for me it was a very long year and a half. Um, I encountered a lot of struggles and difficulties, and um, that's why I created Joey's and um, so now I just want to share um, sort of my solutions, um, my undergarment solutions to my personal problems um, with everybody else in hopes that I can help somebody else in some way overcome some of their fears or struggles or difficulties that they're dealing with. Um, So, um, a bit about Joey's, uh, my undergarments. Um, generally, most of them, they are um, all made out of a dry tech or a way stretch uh, wicking material, um, all for your general comfort level. Um, it uh, wicks away any moisture that's on your skin. And um, so for those reasons too, um, it can be, well, mostly for men, they can wear them in water, they can take them swimming and they will dry quite quickly. Um, they are double banded and contoured in the back so that it does help prevent it from shifting and moving and 
rolling around. Um, they are so, are, they're also made with a unique uh, cut to fit opening for your pouch to rest within a supportive pocket. Um, they, uh, yeah, they helped me and uh, they helped many others. Um, sorry, I have to read off cards because I keep getting <laughs> a little too freaked out. Uh, Eric? So we're going to cover a couple of topics, and uh, we're going to try to cover as much as we possibly can with this subject. Uh, and we will have a Q&A at the end, so if you don't mind just holding some of the questions, and if we haven't answered them already in the presentation, feel free to ask. So, intro to dressing uh, with, an, with an awesome. So, um, when I was asked, to be a part of uh, this topic of fashion with Eric. I was delighted. Um, but however, the first thing that didn't come to mind, it wasn't a piece of clothing and it wasn't a awesome accessory. It's actually just confidence. Um, that's the, I find that to be the most important thing overall. Uh, if you don't wear your confidence, then it won't really matter what you're wearing fashionably. It's, it's the person that makes any outfit complete and look good. It's just you. Um, I recently came across a statistic that said that only 4% of women globally find themselves to be beautiful. And I think that's pretty sad. I think it's true, but I think it's extremely sad that it's only 4% of women. Uh, I think we cannot be conformed any longer to the pattern of the world that's around us. Um, I think we must transform uh, the renewing of our minds. Um, I believe that society in general has contributed to uh, curbing and uh, it basically it gives us first we we give a negative outlook on ourselves. Um, but sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I think we need to. Uh, we first try to. I think we do give a negative outlook on ourselves, and uh, I think we always try to prove ourselves wrong, but we never quite actually get there because um, we're always just too hard on ourselves. Um, you've all probably heard of fat talk. Um, it's a phenomenon in which a person makes negative claims about their weight to others. Well, it's an expected norm among women as a way for them to appear more modest. Uh, with age, um, we forget about fat talk and we start talking about old talk. And it's just a, we just keep beating ourselves up. We need to start being more positive. And uh, instead of being so negative and, and hard on ourselves. The thing is, is us women are so quick to judge ourselves and beat ourselves down to appear to be more carefree and less bothered by our insecurities. When in fact we need to embrace ourselves the way that we are and have, we have ostomies um, and we know firsthand what the consequences may be if we weren't so lucky to have had these surgeries. We need to remind ourselves how incredibly fortunate we are. We can't be conformed any longer to the negative and judgmental patterns of the world around us, but embrace ourselves and the love of the life that we've been given by renewing our self-confidence. Um, this is a photo that was um, done by the Dove Campaign for Real Beauty. You've probably seen it in commercials or magazine articles. Um, but what the Dove Campaign did is they hired a criminal sketch artist to draw women as they see themselves and how others see them. The social experiment revealed that women's perception of themselves was very different than how others viewed them. And this is just incredibly disheartening to me. Um, it just, I, we just shouldn't think like this. Um, but for all these reasons, this is um, why I do think that self-confidence is going to get you the farthest. 
and it will provide you the largest amount of comfortability within your day-to-day -day attire. I also completely feel that the outfit does help set the mood, though. <laughs> um, as a woman, I feel that we generally tend to hold our heads just a little bit higher um, when we take the time to do our hair or maybe our makeup or our nails or put on an outfit, something new. Um, anything that sort of aids in providing a little more due care and attention, uh, just the slightest, it makes you feel good. As an ostomate, uh, certain clothing techniques and uh, ostomy specific accessories um, may seem like little things, but in all fact, they can have a huge impact on your level of confidence. Um, and these are just the things that you wear under your clothes. Nobody sees them. Um, but you know what? Like, just do whatever makes you feel good. Nobody needs to know that you're wearing anything like that underneath. You just need to do these things for you. And whatever makes you comfortable and confident. So having an awesome me doesn't mean you'll be living in uh, sweatpants for the rest of your life. And that was actually a quote that I came across when I uh, first became an awesome mate, because that was one of the fears that I had. It's like, well, now what am I supposed to do? Am I just supposed to stay at home, not do anything, kind of just lounge around in my pajamas, and, and that's it, not enjoy life? Um, it, it, it's a funny phrase because it's completely not true. Or I should say, it's not true that you have to wear sweatpants for the rest of your life. So what I like to do uh, to find the perfect fit for me is I like to ask myself these three questions. And this goes for any kind of accessory that I might be looking at, any kind of clothing option that I'm looking at. And I try to cover uh, the three C's. So is it comfortable? So will I actually be comfortable wearing this? I know many of us try to fit into things that perhaps may not feel as comfortable as they should be. Uh, that's one thing that I really consider to be extremely important. The second one is it going to be convenient? Uh, if I have a certain awesome accessory, is it something that I'm going to want to put on every day? Is it something that's going to be uh, a lot of trouble when I go to empty my bag or when I have to change an appliance and you know put it back on? Is that going to be trouble? So that's something that I definitely like to consider. And the third, which is perhaps the most important, is will it improve my confidence? I'm not going to wear something just for the fact that I can wear it. It has to give me something back, and confidence is one of those things. The good news is, we have more options than ever. I think that's really important because as I was looking through the um, Museum of Awesome Appliances uh, that Andy was showing me, I was just completely astonished by some of the appliances that people had to wear even 50, 60 years ago. And I can see today that we have uh, new manufacturers coming out with different clothing options, different accessories we can wear. A lot of the pouch manufacturers are now making bags that look pretty good. And uh, it, you know, it's a great time to really have those options available to us. So I'm going to go over some of the awesome specific options. So this will cover mainly the accessories. And I really like to use accessories um, sort of as tools. You know, Some of them get the job done, depending on what I'm doing. Now that's to say that these are not necessary to have a good life with an ostomy. These are things that you can add that may help to improve your quality of life. And in some cases, there may be products that you just don't need. So I'm gonna go over some of the ones that I found to be specifically helpful to me. And the first one is stoma guards. Now, stoma guards, for those who, who aren't aware, they're like a rigid plastic that you would put over your stoma. Now, some people might say, well, I don't need that. Why would I, like, what would I need to have something like that? Well, first of all, it offers good for protection from impact. So if you happen to be in a job that you'll be around perhaps heavy machinery, or if you have large dogs that like to jump on your lap, or if you have kids, for example, uh, young kids like I do, uh, protection from impact is pretty important. I actually like to go on a lot of amusement park rides, uh, roller coasters specifically, and I found that uh, once I started wearing stoma guards, my life just became a lot easier because I knew that I wasn't going to be at any risk of injuring my stoma. They're also good for protecting your stoma from your belt line. So if you happen to have a stoma that's lower, 
Uh, I know a lot of people when they're wearing pants and they're wearing a belt, that can get in the way. Uh, seat belts, for example, can get in the way. And uh, stomach guards actually make a, for a good product to protect your stomach against those kind of things. Now it does offer support, depending on the style that you're wearing, not all of them will offer support. Uh, in fact, some stomach guards actually need to be supported themselves by another kind of accessory. Now some of the cons with having a stomach guard, unfortunately, is that they can sometimes be uncomfortable uh, and bulky. And I know that, I mean, you can see just here on the display, there are actually quite a few different styles. And the graphic here is a little deceiving because not all of these are the same size. Some are much larger than others, and some are much thicker than others. Um, but they will get the job done for certain activities, but not all of them are going to be as comfortable uh, to wear as others. So as you can see here, on the left side, I am wearing a stoma guard, and that's specifically to help um, with the belt. That also comes in handy for many other things, but this happens to be one of the larger guards um, that I personally own. Support bands and belts. This, this happens to be one of my most prized, I think, uh, accessory. I absolutely love these kind of belts, but they're really not for everyone. One of the benefits is that they do offer very good support. Uh, they help to keep your appliance flat, and they're really great for intimacy, because the way you wear them, and I'll explain it in the next slide, um, kind of keeps things out of the way. Let's just put it that way. Now, unfortunately, they do not offer protection. However, I have been able to get certain sizes, certain very small stoma guards underneath these bands, um, right on top of the stoma, and they actually will provide some protection in that configuration. And for some people, they may actually increase sweating, perspiration around the stoma, which may be undesirable, especially during the summertime. Support bands are quite versatile, and uh, as you can see in the next slide, uh, I actually wear mine everywhere. So when you're wearing a support band, at least the ones that I'm talking about, they're designed to actually wear with your appliance sideways. Now, a lot of people might think, well, how the heck do you do that? And believe me, I was one of those people. But wearing your bag sideways has some advantages, but it's absolutely not for everyone. And it, a lot of it depends on the consistency of your uh, output. Uh, for example, if you have very liquid output, then I usually don't recommend people go this way because it will create some additional problems or it has the potential to. And you can see here two examples to the left. There are actually two different um, types of accessory belts. Uh, you guys are actually fortunate enough to have a vendor that makes another uh, style of belt just outside there, Asta Belt. So if you want to check that out later. But they all function the same way. They have zippers along the bottom, so emptying my bag is actually pretty easy. And uh, everything is tucked away. You'll notice there that my uh, belt line is actually below everything. So normally when I would have my bag hanging down, I would actually have to use either a stoma guard or just keep it outside of my pants. That's not always practical. So this actually helps to eliminate that. You can see on the right side, that's actually a photo of me on a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. I happen to be wearing uh, one of these belts, and I'm not sure exactly on the date which one I would be wearing, would probably the one at the top. But I was wearing that, I had actually no trouble, despite the fact that I wasn't wearing a guard at the time. It keeps things out of the way, and the way a lot of these rides uh, are set up, you'll usually have a harness that comes across, usually on your lap, very similar to a uh, seatbelt, and that kept everything out of the way and was able to enjoy myself. But as I mentioned, this is really not for everyone. If you have a urostomy, for example, it may give you some difficulty. I have an ileostomy, but I'm very fortunate that my ileostomy output is quite thick. So these, these kind of uh, support bands actually work pretty well for me. Now, if you do happen to have liquid output or loose output, and you have an ileostomy or even a colostomy, uh, there are ways to kind of mitigate that. I know we had the doctor talk about uh, some uh, medications that you could use. Uh, I prefer to either include certain foods in my diet that I know will thicken things up, but other people will uh, have different uh, methods. Another option, if you go this way and you have liquid output, is to use a gelling agent. And that actually goes inside your pouch, 
And what will happen is when it comes in contact with your uh, liquid output, it will start to thicken up and jellify. It's actually pretty cool to see it happen. Uh, and that will make things much more manageable, um, less prone to getting leaks uh, if the liquid output creates leaks for you. Now another uh, very popular product, uh, and I actually started using these right out of surgery uh, up until the point that I started using the bands, but I do continue to use them sometimes, are ostomy wraps or belly bands. Now, the, the two different uh, products there, the ostomy wraps are specifically for ostomates, so they tend to have a pocket you can put your pouch into. Um, that'll help to keep the pouch nice and secure. It'll also keep the bottom of the pouch from dangling. Uh, whereas belly bands, the, you would normally see those for women who are pregnant or uh, even as a fashion accessory that kind of simulates that you're wearing some kind of shirt underneath your clothing so that if you're lifting up your hands, you can see the bottom of the belly band instead of your bare skin. Uh, both of those options work. I find that the ostomy wraps for me personally work a little bit better, especially as my bag starts to fill because, I, again, uh, the bottom of the bag will usually dangle down and the, uh, the pockets on the wraps do a good job of keeping it contained. You can see there on the top right, uh, that's exactly how your bag would fit in. Obviously, you'd be you'd have that bag on you, uh, but that's exactly how it works. Now, they are fairly easy to put on. They do offer some level of support, but they offer no protection from impacts. And sometimes they actually tend to ride up a bit. And I know some uh, manufacturers will design, uh, I don't know if it's silicone or rubber, but there's like these bands that just go along the top and bottom, and that helps to prevent it from sliding. But depending on your body weight, that might still be an issue. So uh, that's one of the cons, unfortunately, for uh, ostomy wraps and belly bands. And you can see here, uh, this is just a traditional ostomy wrap that I'm wearing. And you can see how it looks underneath clothing. It does keep things very concealed. If, again, if I were to lift up my arms in that case, because the shirt is pretty low, all you would see is the belly band. You wouldn't see a bag, you wouldn't see my skin, or anything like that. You just see the wrap. Pouch covers. Now, these are more of like a novelty uh, item, I think, because unfortunately, they don't, they don't really conceal your appliance very well. Uh, they are available in a lot of different styles, so they, they're actually a good idea if, if you're a very young ostomate. I know there are a lot of kids or pediatric uh, ostomates who actually love these kind of things. And if you're the type of person like me who likes to wear clear bags, this is better than nothing. So uh, these are actually pretty fun options. They come in a wide variety of, of colors and patterns and things like that, as you can see on the left. That's just one person making these by hand and selling them. Uh, you can see there's, there's so many different patterns. But as you can see, they're on the right. They're not always ideal. You know, it adds no concealment whatsoever under my clothing. It's very visible. Um, but you know, for around the house, it's actually better, like I said, when wearing a clear bag. Now, hernia bands uh, and support bands, uh, this is something that you should really be talking to your ET nurse about because a lot of the times there's very specific fitting that you have to go through. And there are many, many types of bands available and they support you in different ways. But these may either help to prevent hernias or they may support an existing hernia. Unfortunately, a lot of them are, are pretty big, um, but I, I have seen quite a few styles that appear to be relatively slim. They won't really uh, cause you to sweat or anything like that. Uh, but some of them may be uncomfortable and they offer no protection. What tends to happen is you would actually feed your bag through an opening um, in this belt and that's it, it just hangs down, but it offers support underneath that. So it won't offer any kind of external protection, although there may be some available that um, kind of augment together with a stoma guard uh, to allow for some level of protection anyway. And as I mentioned, it should be properly fitted. You can't just go and wrap any type and expect it to work well. The, the, hole, the hole that your flange goes through has to be the right size. The band has to fit your body properly. Now, unfortunately, this, this is an item that tends to be pretty expensive. And I know, um, I think it seats a little different, but in Ontario, I have to actually have a prescription in order to even get my private insurance to cover it. So the government doesn't cover it at all. There's no, no benefits like that that will actually cover it. I think you guys have it the same way you're either paying for these out of pocket 
or if you're lucky enough to have some kind of private insurance, they may cover um, hernia support bands or prevention bands. Now, not everybody needs these. I don't wear one. Uh, my surgeon actually said, you know, you don't need one. But you know what, as you get older, things change. Uh, and I think at some point I may decide to wear one, especially if I'm uh, perhaps getting into some kind of strength training or other kind of vigorous uh, exercise like that. Now that's an example of one type of hernia belt. Now as you can see around the flange opening there, there's like this material, and that material usually ends up being a little bit uh, rig more rigid than the other parts, and that will apply a bit of pressure around your, um, your stoma, and that again should prevent or support uh, the, uh, the hernia. Now the other parts of the band are usually a very elastic material, and they tend to be a little tight. A lot, a lot more so than, let's say, an ostomy wrap, which won't prevent hernias. Now, another category, and this is, I think, something that's fairly new because I've only started seeing manufacturers come up with these products pretty recently, and that is the un uh, ostomy undergarments. Now, these are designed to help keep your bag flat, close to your body, and they have like a pocket there, as you can see. Now, that uh, particular one up in the, in the top. Uh, that's a men's underwear, the pocket is on the outside. A lot of the times, pockets are on the inside. They offer no protection, unfortunately, um, but they are available in many styles. Men's styles, women's styles, there are certain styles that, uh, for women especially, that are more like lingerie. Um, so the one on the bottom, that is a Joey's undergarment. Um, it's called a hide and sleep. That's uh, the garment that I originally made for myself. Um, and uh, for me, my reasons for making this garment um, were because I always felt that my pouch was sort of sticking and creating a bit of sweat and stuff underneath there, and it just irritated me. Um, I also, uh, I would always rub my hand down my pouch to make sure everything wasn't sort of bulging up all in one area, um, that it was sort of keeping an even consistency, because I didn't want it sort of bulking out. Um, it was just always something that was always on my mind. And um, I also had a lot of leaks when I had my ostomy. I quite often, on most days, I changed it twice a day um, due to blowouts. It was just, we did not get along, my ostomy and I. It was kind of a lucky relationship. Um, she saved my life, but uh, she always leaked on me. And um, so this helped me. Um, it kept things close to my body. It kept that sweaty feeling away. And um, it also gave me enough time to get to a restroom um, before things seeped through my clothing. Um, so that's kind of how that got started. Um, it does not have as much support as my other garment does because it does not have a elastic waistband around the bottom. But that's because I wore a lot of skirts and dresses and um, I found that this one worked well. It worked better with that look. Um, it uh, prevented any sort of movement and swaying underneath my skirt or my dress. Um, So I thought it was important to bring a little bit of laughter into today. Um, so these are clothing battles. Uh, even though we sometimes struggle with what to wear to hide our ostomies to the maximum in all, aspects, in all aspects of life and special occasions, whether it be business, casual, exercise, bed or formal, there are certain styles of clothing that you're drawn to, and then there's other styles that you just know to stay far, far away from. Um, so these here, uh, they could just be an unsightly sight. Uh, halter tops and halter dresses. It's, it's kind of just, I mean, these are battles for everybody, not just ostomists. So everybody does have their struggles. But we wouldn't normally yank in public. Um, but when it comes to folly downy things, you just, got a yank, all the rules go out the window. Um, and low-rise jeans. Well, as an onlooker, it's just not all that appealing. Um, and it can be a challenge to try and find an outfit for a special occasion that uh, 
assumes you don't need to wear a bra or underwear underneath. Uh, there's often uh, lace panels um, that are showing, and, and it can be hard to find something appropriate. This here is um, basically drawing all um, attention to the wrong areas. So the dark one there, it's a bum. I don't know if you can see it, but I can't really see it on this angle. But um, it's showing a panty line. Um, so it's just not becoming on anybody. And uh, then there's the boob gap. Um, so if you are in any way well endowed, and this is any way well endowed, um, to be able to wear a blouse and not have it gape open, it's pretty tough. So you either have to uh, have it gape or you have to buy about two sizes too big and then it's just loose everywhere else. And uh, this one here is um, for a romper. Um, so it's, it's pretty impossible to burp or empty your pouch conveniently when wearing a romper. Um, you pretty much just have to get fully naked just to go to the bathroom. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of the uh, common items that you may already be wearing or may already have in your closet. I don't personally wear suspenders, but I know a lot of people have written me saying, you know, my husband wears them or I wear them. And it's a good alternative to wearing a belt because in that case, you don't have to necessarily put anything across your stomach. The suspenders do a great job of holding your pants up. What I usually would suggest is just go maybe a size bigger. And then that way, you know for sure that there's not going to be any pressure or anything like that around there. High-waisted pants are another option. Now, not everybody makes high-waisted pants, but if you go to, I don't know if you guys have like the Bay or Sears locally, but I do where I, where I live. And uh, they tend to have a couple of different options anyway. Um, these are great if you have a low-riding stoma. So they're not for everyone if your stoma tends to be higher up then I would just prefer to get regular trousers or something just slightly lower and then that way it'll be below the uh, stoma line. Now the great thing about the high-waisted pants is you don't need any kind of stoma guards or any, anything extra to, to get that to work. Now if you are going to go this route, I would caution, uh, don't let your bag get too full. Because what happens is as you're sitting, there's going to be a lot of pressure on your, on your bag. Um, because of where it is, and you don't want to have any kind of accidents like that. So keep it as empty as possible if you go uh, this route. So we're going to go over some of the tips and tricks that you can use. Oh yeah, some tips and tricks. Um, one would be uh, interesting necklines uh, and bold necklaces. Um, bold necklaces that hang low, it draws your eyes upward, um, more so to your upper half, um, or even a pair of flashy or larger earrings. Uh, they can have the same effect. Um, but just keep in mind maybe just one piece of statement to agree at a time. Um, so uh, um, scrunched sleeves um, or loose layers. Uh, tops with kimono style sleeves or scrunched sleeves they add volume to your arms, uh, and as a result, they take center stage. Uh, loose layers create dimension and all over body coverage. Embellished tops and shirts that skim over the hips. Shirts that have a dormant near the neck, um, they elongate the shoulder and the neckline Beading bows and collars, um, large or small, they both accomplish the same task of drawing the eye upwards and away from your lower half. Uh, tops that extend just below your hips, um, they extend your torso and they mask your midsection you're trying, that you're trying to minimize, um, in which case crop tops, they just should be widely, widely avoided. Flashy shoes and circle scarves. Shoes can change the appearance of the rest of your body. Shoes with a pointed toe help elongate the legs. 
make a fuller pouch appear emptier. <laughs> um, bold and colorful shoes uh, can do the same as a big necklace. Uh, it draws the eye away from the region that you're trying to disguise and adds interest to other areas. Circle scarves are successful as they lack the tail ends. Um, they prevent the eye from traveling downwards. Wear supportive undergarments. Uh, both upper and lower garments uh, look for a natural style that can be worn underneath both casual and dress clothes. Uh, for example, pitch um, and or a matching bra or panty of your choice. So stretchy pants, um, stretchy waists, uh, maternity and yoga. This was actually my uh, absolute favorite uh, pants to wear. Uh, they were my Lululemons. So um, I also had recently just had a baby, so I had a lot of maternity clothes still kicking around. <laughs> On normally, they probably would have been long gone sooner, but um, I kept them around when I had my ostomy, and I did, I wore them quite a bit. I love the fact that they came up so high and they were able to sort of help keep everything close and contained. Um, but uh, high waist pants that keep things close and flat. Uh, my favorite tank top was just like this, but black. So it was tight at the bottom, um, and it relaxed. It was relaxed throughout, which also helped during pouch expansion. A-line dresses, ruffles, and rouging. So my absolute go-to going out outfit, they were A-line dresses. Uh, dresses are a great way to accomplish both tasks at once. It draws the eye upward while creating a waistline appearance above your stoma and allowing the material to be more free flow at the bottom. For me, I, it was always paired with a hide and fleek to keep everything just so. Ruffles and rouging create dimension and all over coverage and interest. Uh, be your own chameleon because it really does help hide things. The orange dress pictured here is actually an image of the dress that I wore to a friend's wedding shortly after my ostomy surgery. I wore my hide and sleek underneath and it was actually the first time that I had forgotten for a moment that I had an ostomy. Uh, it was an incredible feeling uh, to know that it had become a part of me and for just a brief moment I forgot about it and it didn't define me. But. Uh, Actually, doing all these slides with Eric, it um, made me realize that I have zero photos of myself. <laughs> and I actually gave my husband half for it because I'm always the one behind the camera. It's like I don't exist. So I have to pull that off <laughs> the internet. So let's put this all together. And uh, we're going to talk about just making everything fit now. So I've done a lot of stuff uh, since having my ostomy surgery. Uh, in the photo on the left there, it was actually uh, like an indoor rock climbing, which is very fun. Now you can see here on the, the harness, that actually does interfere a lot with the stoma. In this case, I believe I was wearing just a regular stoma garb so that I kept things protected. The middle photo there, I was uh, zip lining at uh, Blue Mountains or around the area of Blue Mountains in Ontario. And that was really, really fun. But again, uh, you know, I had to make sure that I had my uh, bag and my stoma was in place so that I wasn't being interfered with uh, because of the harnesses and whatnot. I do believe I also had a guard uh, in that photo as well. And the photo on, on the right is one that I took uh, during my brother's wedding. I always found out that suits aren't that hard to shop for when you've got a stoma. Uh, I found a really great pair of pants that actually have like an expandable waist, and that came in super, super handy. Uh, not just because you know you might be gaining weight, losing weight over time, and you want to continue to wear the pants, but because if you wear your pouch down vertically, it will come in really, really handy to manage that if your appliance starts to fill throughout the day. 
For that day, uh, I was wearing my bag sideways, and I had on my support band, and I had absolutely no trouble at all uh, through the entire day. So here are some general tips that are probably just as important as the clothing and accessories that we choose to wear. Uh, as Brandy mentioned uh, earlier, confidence, it, it quite literally is the most important thing you can wear. If you're not confident about what you have on or how you present yourself, you're not gonna feel very good about yourself and other people will notice. Obviously, you wanna keep your bag empty. Um, that is not how you wanna be wearing uh, your Rossi bag. This is a morning that I woke up. The bag is quite full at that point. I wouldn't dare going out uh, expecting to get on with the day uh, with a bag that full. So keep it as empty as possible. And I know for some of us that might have an ileostomy or, or high uh, output ostomy, that's gonna be more of a challenge, but believe me, it's, it's much easier to manage things, especially if you're wearing a lot of the accessories and whatnot, when you've got an empty bag. Now something that a lot of people may not be too aware of is that uh, you do have options like one piece and two piece appliances. And you can see down on the bottom right there, uh, that's an example of a one piece bag. So that's actually the bag and the wafer all combined because it's a one piece. But you'll notice just how thin that is. Uh, when you compare that to a two piece, where you've got your, usually it's like a plastic flange that you know, attaches your bag to the wafer, uh, that adds a little more bulk. Some are not so bad, but if you're looking for the absolute thinnest appliance, perhaps you might want to consider a one piece. Now, personally, I use a two piece for actually several reasons. I find them more convenient, especially if I have to only replace the bag. Uh, but I've uh, worn one piece systems uh, on occasion and they do have a very, very low profile. One other thing that you can use uh, to kind of create an illusion uh, when you're wearing clothing is to wear a pattern or a textured uh, and dark clothing. That will help to um, sort of camouflage what's going on. It'll make things appear flat and they maybe aren't. So that's a good option uh, to consider. And uh, layering the clothing definitely is going to help because with those layers, it kind of fills in any gaps. So if your bag happens to bulge out a bit, um, by layering, you're actually going to create a bit more space in between your skin uh, and the outer fabric, and that will reduce the appearance of that appliance. And the last point here is don't worry. Most people won't notice the thing. That's actually some, uh, something that a friend of mine told me. And the more I think about it, the, you know, it really is true. Everybody, or most of the people in this room have an ostomy, but I guarantee most of the people outside of this room probably wouldn't know that. So don't, don't preoccupy yourself with you know, what people are thinking and can they see that I have an ostomy bag. Most people aren't even aware unless you're telling them. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. So now we're going to have our Q&A. Uh, hopefully the presentation has given you at least some answers, but if you do have any more, please feel free to ask them.